going on people welcome back to another john sinclair tv back again i've got sabrina again and she's quite happy to come back because she loved the program so much she decides to come back right absolutely yes <laughs> <laughs> now i'm an oh. honorary fan because you guys officially signed tonali <laughs> yes <laughs> And I'm so sorry um, that we pinched him, by the way, sort of thing. But um, hey, ho, what can I say, man? But um, at the end of the day, all right, we've got to be ambitious as well. And um, I hope uh, Ruben lost his cheek does well for you. So look after yes. him. And I hope he does well for you as well. So, guys, um, if you like the video, like what you see, like and subscribe. Do follow Sabrina uh, Zabby, Zabby 10 I think it's Sabi 10. And if you like to super chat, it's open. If you like to become a member of 99P as well, this is a recorded to show. And we're going to talk about Federico Chiesa. Now, there's been reports, um, a couple of tabloids um, the last few years, that Newcastle is definitely interested in him and just making inquiries at the minute. But it's going to be around 50 odd million pound, 56 million pound. And it looks like Chiesa could be making the way to the Premier League. If we make a concrete offer, I think the lad wants to come as well. So Federico Chiesa, yes, he's had a lot of injuries in the past, but when he's fit, this guy is absolutely fantastic. Sabrina, tell us more about Federico Chiesa. And what do you yeah, so he is coming off an ACL. Yeah, he is coming off an ACL injury from the previous season. Um, Juventus actually did a good job with kind of easing him back in. They didn't overutilize him. Um, so there was no re-injuries or anything like that. Uh, so this season will kind of be a test to see if he's going to be back to what he fully was and the promising talent that he was. Um, he yeah. came up at Fiorentina, which is a bitter rival of Juventus, though some Juventus fans might not uh, agree with that. Um, but he he's got amazing pace. He's very dynamic, plays on the right wing. He, he was, if you guys won't remember from the Euros, that was kind of a breakout tournament for him. Uh, he wasn't favored too much at the beginning, but then fought for his spot and became integral to Italy, making that push to win the trophy. Um, so I think the possibility of him leaving Juventus is really great because the club has confirmed the coach, Massimiliano Allegri, and there has been a lot of reports that he's not happy with the coach. In like the way that he was utilized by the coach who played in many different positions and none of them really played to his strengths. So Juventus are also a club that are in a real sticky financial situation. Um, a lot has happened there. So I think there's a decent chance of him moving on. And if he can play to the way that he played prior to his injury, you're looking at a really, really pacey, dynamic, skilled player who can also contribute directly in attack rather than just crosses he'll he'll net you a few goals as well if he can get to where he's he was going before the injury yeah i mean he started his career like i said at fiorentina 2016 to 2020 had a two-year loan spell with juventus on loan before they took him on permanently played for fiorentina 137 appearances 26 goals follow la viola and this guy I mean, there's such a real talent. He's young, dynamic, scores, scores. And he's been a fan of Fiorentina, but when he moved to Juve, then they just discarded him, really. Because, like you said, they're both rivals. Yeah. Yeah. There's a big history with Fiorentina letting their players go to Juventus. Um, Fiorentina does not like Juventus in any way, shape, or form. And I think for the fans, they kind of thought maybe Federico would stay a little bit longer there. Um, they also didn't like the way he was behaving towards the end, trying to push a move. His attitude really wasn't there. Um, and I think he was just frustrated because before the American owners came in at Fiorentina, there wasn't really an ambitious project. So I think he kind of felt stuck there and started to stagnate. And then when he moved to Juventus, you really saw him take off. He looked much happier there and then unfortunately the the injury happened and it was just a freak accident as well he just um knocked knees i think it was with another player just it didn't seem like it's something that would tear his acl uh so it was very devastating for him to do that but we've seen some flashes since he's he's come back in the limited appearances that he made last season so i think 
the signs are there for him to rebound well from the injury. Yeah, as you can see, it's not a good in not very good record of injury as well. Ten months out of ACL, he had like muscle injury, and there's another injury I can't pronounce as well. He had quite a few, like two weeks off and a week off here and there. And I know when I did a clip of him before, I said keep him UV, but when I look back on it again, I made a mistake. And this guy could be an absolute asset for Newcastle United because we're going to push and push and get this guy. And if he does come to Newcastle, I think this guy's going to be a hero. Yeah, absolutely. And for Juventus, I think if the price is right, then it, it's it'll be really smooth. And you see the player doesn't really desire to stay there anyway. Um, as you might have seen in the news, Juventus had two kind of scandals where um, one was about fake capital gains. And a lot of fans won't agree with that because they're saying, how can you really justify what a player's worth? But there was a, a paper trail that kind of indicated that's what it was. And that saw them not only miss out in of the Champions League, but also recently it came out that UEFA and them agreed to the fact that they won't even be playing the Conference League. So Kez is looking at, I'm not going to be playing in Europe. I mean, would he want to play the Conference League anyway? Probably not. But now he's not even playing that. They've got another court case that is going to happen regarding uh, salaries paid off the books during the COVID time, which is extremely serious uh, because Juventus is a publicly traded company. So I think he might be looking at that as well and saying, you know what, get me out of here and let get me somewhere that I can play in Europe. And for him to play in the Champions League, I think will be really enticing. Yeah, we got a project anyway. I mean, also, he's been linked to Liverpool as well, but they can't offer the Champions League. We can. And yep. if he comes to Newcastle, he's going to love one black and white to another black and white. So. Exactly. Yay. <laughs> Just changing uh, the badge. That's it. <laughs> exactly. 110%. <laughs> let's go on to, um, we do, we're going to go straight at the bats and let's go straight to the, his record as well, the stats and facts and. Here we go. I mean, if you look at this record there, um, goals and it goals expected goals, it's quite a positive there. Goal scored, um, he's talking about you, but 81%. Goal involvement, 98%, seven in total. Goals at home is not the best, 51%. And if you look at it as well, goals away, 95 scored two. Expected goals, 1.66. Non penalties 1.66 as well. And the ground of shots taken as well 15 shots in total, 18 cents. He has been playing much. Shots on target, three out of 15 isn't great. Shots off, 12 out of 15. He likes to blaze it over the bar, done he? Quite a lot. I have watched him. <laughs> and um, if you look at it as well, shot conversion rate 66%, shot accuracy 22%. Wow. So what do you think of those stats, Sabrina? I mean, look, when he's when he's match fit, he's on it. And when yeah. he's not on it, he's just not on it. I think it's also hard to judge his last season, not at all about the capital gains. The whole season they were fighting to get it reinstated. They got it reinstated. Then the drive came back in because they thought, okay, now we're, you know, they were in second place. We can make Champions League. And right near the end of the season, in, and it was literally right before kickoff they announced that they got 10 points taken away which pulled them back out of Europe so I think the whole squad was a little bit off last year because of everything that was going on off the pitch I mean right before the World Cup the whole board of directors resigned um, because of the, the pending criminal case so I can't imagine that it was a great feeling in the locker room there so I would say a little bit a little bit harsh to judge on the stats from last year but um he's got a lot of energy and he is a little bit wild with his shots um if he's focused he can score goals he has a great shot um but yeah. sometimes you and you'll be able to tell on his face uh he gets a little bit overwhelmed and then he just starts getting wild and crazy but I would say if you want to judge the true talent that Chiesa is watch him in those games in the Euro and yeah. he is he is extremely skilled technically, and he's he's got a lot of drive as well. Yeah, I'll have to agree with you because he's got he's twenty five years of age, and look, he's at his peak. And when he's smashed, we're going to see the real Kiesa from me. 
because you can't go off by Nice really because he's not played very much games, unfortunately. Yeah. However, like you said, when he's on it, he's definitely on it as well. And if you look at assist passing and chance to create stats, I mean, like you said, we're not going to go by that too much because he's not played five assists. And if you look at expected goals, 4.16, 266 key pass, successful passes, 217. Well, I wouldn't say. That. And then if you look down, crosses, 42, 90%. You can cross the ball. He's a great cross oh, yeah. of the ball. Fantastic. Successful crosses, 10 out of 42. And cross completion rate, 61%. Now, for me, I mean, assists, he's brilliant. And also the crosser of the ball is a great crosser as well. And you look at the dribbling stats. I'm not bothered about offsides. Dribbles, 46 dribbles. He can dribble. Successful dribbles, 24. That's very, very good. And if you look down to offsides, he needs a lot of work on that. But if you look at this, I think this guy's really, really good. I mean, I was so excited. If he does come to Newcastle, and then you never know. You never know. I'll be excited to see this guy. Yeah, especially Hello? because the other thing that plays into this is Allegri's playing style, which is um, not not at all attacking football that Allegri plays, um, which is one of the reasons that uh, a lot of the players are not happy with him. So I think part of the reason, if you see some stats where he's not doing too well in the attack or you know too well with the passing, is is mostly down to the way that the team itself plays. So. He's just in a situation right now that doesn't really suit his talents. And I think if he can go on somewhere else away from like, especially if you said that you guys have a project, it's very optimistic over there at Newcastle. Whereas at Juventus, it it's, it's just in a world of pain right now. So I think him moving on would definitely see him improve with those stats. 100 percent i can't i can't dismiss him at all whatsoever and if you look at the 2021 season he scored nine goals in 33 champions league four in eight he scored 13 15 goals in total 17 goals in his very first season with uh, uv then the following season he scored five and if, and then after that it's just um two goals but i think this guy I mean, 22, 23 season, we're going to have to kind of dismiss that because at the end of the day, I honestly think he's, he's back to his best. He's really back to his best when he's when he's injury free. Yep, absolutely. And um, yeah, so if you look at the market values, 40 million euros. I think he's worth that. I think you would be looking for around about 52 million quid. Will they get that 52 million quid? I don't know. I think Juventus are definitely trying to look for as much as they can. Uh, they're in real financial trouble. Um, they, their parent company has had to pump in a lot of capital over the years, uh, the recent years. And with the president, Andrea Agnelli, resigning because of that scandal, um, now there's the other part of the Agnelli family. I think they are the, the branch of the family that deal with Ferrari and that stuff they've kind of taken over. And I think they plan on running the club more as a business. They want to get profit. They are not really bothered too much about um, chasing glory. So for them, for those owners, the price would have to be right. And because I think it would be kind of a similar situation to Milan selling Tonali. If they were to sell Chiesa, that would kind of fund the rest of their, their uh, market for the summer. So it all depends on what they they have deemed him to be worth but i think with a little bit of negotiating they'd be willing to let him go as long as it wasn't a really really low offer yeah absolutely we're gonna have to wait and see what happens on that as well but um oh you've got tough negotiations to deal with as well they're very tough negotiations yeah. when it comes to transfers as well and lucas has to face them for a long time but look at the end of the day do you think, will this still happen to Newcastle United? Would he choose Newcastle or do you think he's going to end up choosing Liverpool? I don't know. I think he'd actually push to play European football because I know yeah. Liverpool would be in the Europa League, but I think for him, he's in the, the prime of his life now. You're not going to get many more chances. And mm -hmm. he, as a member of the Italy squad, he's missed out on a World Cup. 
you know, there's nothing really you can do about that. But in terms of club, you can go and you can play for the Champions League. I think that's what he wants to do. So I think, if anything, he's going to choose Newcastle. And, I mean, he knows Tonali. Uh, Italy teammates might have a little bit of sway there, try and get him over there. He'll know one person really well. So I think there's a, a chance that he would push morph to Newcastle in order to play in the Champions League. Yeah, let's hope that let's hope that's the case. I hope he does because I think he's going to be an absolute legend there if he does come to Newcastle. So, and for me, I mean, he'd be pushing as well because Eddie Howe wants him by the sounds. Both for internationally and this guy is had another outstanding season. Plays a left back, left wing back. And he's a left wing back under Simeone. And he's got a market value of £35 million. Apparently, Newcastle have open, kind of open talks with him, with the uh, entourage. And they're just testing the water at the minute. They're not made an offer yet, but they're just testing the water on this guy, just checking him out, basically. And can you see DeMarco moving to Newcastle and the Premier League? This one, I think, is a little bit tougher. Um, because DiMarco is a boyhood Inter fan, which I know doesn't mean anything these days, as we saw with Tonali uh, being a boyhood yeah. Milan fan. <laughs> but, um, what, you know, you can see his love for Inter after Inter eliminated Milan from the Champions League. He went on, uh, they were pitch side, he grabbed the mic, he started making some chants that um, a fan would chant not really a player on the team wow. should be chanting and then had to go and apologize because people were offended um but you can really see he is that diehard inter fan he's just getting in his stride with inter and i think the way that inter's setting up their market like if you would have asked me maybe a year or so ago things looked a little bit bleak at inter kind of looked like they were you know just trying to sell everybody off because of their financial position but you can see that uh, Manchester United's coming in for Onana. That'll bring in a lot of money for them as well. They made mm -hmm. some smart moves. They got in Davide Fratesi, which um, another boyhood Inter fan. So I think they've got a, a, a strong group of younger players. They're trying to get rid of all those older players. They got rid of Brozovic. They're trying to, you know, go for more of a youth project. So I think it will be hard to sway the player to yeah. move. Um, but I think as far as Inter is concerned, you know, if the, if, if the money is right, they'd entertain it. But you're looking at really intense negotiations with Pepe Marotta, who is one of the best in the business in Serie A and I think world football in general. So you're going to have to really convince him and convince the, the Inter management that the price would be right. So I think this one's much tougher than getting Chiesa. Yeah. I mean, if you look at his um, style of play, he's got a crack and left foot, immediately oh, yeah. sets him apart from others, as DeMarco often looks to play a deadly ball delivery, a whipping cross into opposition, a penalty area. He's good at defending, good going forward, and he can also take dead ball passes as well, dead ball free kicks as well. Kieran Trippier, you may have competition if he comes, but look, this guy, got Mark find you 35 million quid, I think they'll probably push for more, about 40 to 45 million quid if you're going to let him go. But like you said, it's going to be a tough, tough deal to do. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But if you could, he would be worth it. And I think he's just kind of getting into his stride. Um, he was a little bit, um, yeah, yeah it's just a little bit unrefined. Um, but I think this year at Inter's definitely matured him. And I mean, they went all the way to the Champions League final. So I think that this experience has really made him grow and mature as a player. And um, he's just coming into his own. And I think he's going to be an incredible talent. Um, really good for Italy as well to have a good left back. I know he does play left wing back, but he can play left back as well. Um, because that's a position that the Italian national team will sorely miss as well. Mm -hmm. um, so if he can get some, you know, more experience, if he ends up going to the Premier League, I think that would be good for his growth. But I think it's going to be tough to to sway him. I don't think... He's going to want to go, especially Barella decided to stay, wants to stay at Inter. I think they feel like we could do something. I think last year made them realize, you know, we got to the final of the Champions League. They might have had a little bit of a favorable path to get there. But I think the players themselves are realizing, you know, if we stay here, we might actually be able to be competitive. So I think this one's a lot harder to, to get over the line. 
Yeah, it's going to be tough. It's going to be really tough. But again, if the Premier League offers big money, then I'm yeah. sure it's going to have to go. And um, if you look at the strengths, I'll try to get it up, by the way. Look at the strengths. It's good, very strong. Crossing, keep passing. And passing, direct free kicks, takes it pieces, holding onto the ball, absolutely fantastic. The only downside for Federico is his aerial duels as well. And he looks a bit not as strong as that for what I've watched of him. However, if you look at the style of play, he loves to cross, he loves to play the ball um, as often as he can, and he does like to play the long balls wherever he can. So just checking out the stats as well. So I think this guy, if we do get him, we will get have a fantastic left back. There's been media reports as well saying that, like I said earlier, they're just kind of testing the water. Yeah, yeah. So anything can happen, but it, I mean that left foot that he has is just on fire. He's he's it's it makes me sad that he's at my team's rivals because he's so good. Um, so I think he'd be an asset to any team that he would go to. But yeah, he's definitely matured a lot as a footballer. So he's if you do get him, you're getting a much more polished polished version of what he was. And he'll only he'll only improve. I think he's got a really high ceiling. Yeah. I mean, like you say, he's an Inter Milan fan as well. And that's going to be very tough. Look at Nicola Barella. I mean, when people reports came out in Newcastle, uh, agreed with Inter 50 million quid, that is never enough. I mean, here a report on that, Sabrina, should be sacked. Because the end of the day, <laughs> it's just absolutely ridiculous, man. I believe that came from Luke Edwards. He, he started it all off, like, do you know what I mean? Because yeah. he's the Telegraph journalist that he's so negative. He just loved to wind Newcastle fans up as well. And everything goes well. He comes in and says, puts cold water on anything positive, that guy. He's a post later orient in League Two, mind. The fourth tier. Well, third tier of English football now. They got promoted, yeah. But for me, I take the notice of him as well if I can help it. <laughs> it's absolutely mad it's a madness yeah. absolute mad absolute madness man but saying that it's just um you know we're gonna have to wait and see on that one so yeah so um look, your team Milan lost his cheek good signing uh I don't know if he could stay healthy I mean Milan has has a bad track record with keeping players healthy um, every year we go through an injury slump where it feels like most of our starting 11 is out. Seems like um, Loftus-Cheek has an issue with that as well. So, I mean, I think it, for him, he's coming. He's got a good relationship with Tamori. Tamori can show him the ropes. Um, Tamori's loving life in Milan, so I think that'll that'll really help him. Apparently, Pulisic is, is on the way too, so I'll have another familiar face there. And I mean, like uh, things have changed at Milan, but there a lot of the stuff is still the same. Um, our manager is still the same as much as a lot of fans don't like him. He is really good with the players. So hopefully that works out because he's got some big shoes to fill. We're all still reeling from losing Tonali in the way that we did. But if he can come in and make us forget, well, he'll be like kind of a legend for us. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I'll tell you what, though, if Newcastle ever wants to get another Milan player for me, it'd be Mani on, on Tio. No! Milan. No! no. Oh, fantastic! <laughs> oh, my God. We lost Donnarumma in a dramatic fashion two years ago. I no. I was I was freaking out at that. And then everyone's like, oh, Mike Mignon's coming. I'm like, oh, I don't know. How could he fill the shoes of Donnarumma? <laughs> and then he completely blew him out of the water. So now it's like, let us have him, let us have Hernandez, and let us have Leao for a few more years, please. <laughs> Just wow. Let us, let us do some stuff for a few more years because I can't take losing another one of the, the big fan favorites right now. No, definitely not. Definitely not. That's um, Dollar Rumor came on the PSG on the free, didn't he? On the free yeah. transfer as well. My God. <sighs> that is absolutely shocking. Whose decision was that to? Let him go on the free you land his contract. Whose decision was that? So he okay, so when it was when Mino Raiola was alive, he was his agent. And the year or two prior, with the a previous ownership, he kind of did the same thing. They tried to hold the club hostage. They wanted like four million more than he was making, and he was still a teenager. And then what they did was to make him happy, they gave him this huge salary. 
And then they said, we'll sign your brother too, who is a back, a backup goalie, but should never, even as a backup had no Milan quality, but they did that in order to make him stay. And then when his contract was winding down, this was a new ownership. This was when Maldini and Masada were in charge. They wanted to double his salary. So I think they wanted him at 10 million euros net a season for a goalkeeper who has some big gaps in his game. He's awful with the ball at his feet. Um, and then at, at a certain point, they just stopped responding. Um, they were making weird comments in the media. So Maldini and Masada thought, not, not, not going to play these games and be left high and dry. They contacted Mignon. They got that signed. And then Maldini called them up and said, you can go. You're done. You're not a Milan player at the end. It sounds, it, it sounds bad, but it was so cold. And it was like, if you're going to jerk around and you're not going to sign, because it's like, you know, people can say what they want about Tonali, but at least he didn't leave us high and dry. He left. He got us a big fee. We can use that money. As fans, we were all saying that about Donnarumma. Sign a one-year, two-year deal, let and then go wherever you want to go with give us something. You know, he's a he was a youth product. You know, he came up through the ranks. He got given his start at 16 years old. So we're like, come on, do something for us. But to jerk around the club that you say you love. And then in the end, say, like before, when he was still a Milan player, he was just saying weird things. And then after said, oh, I have different ambitions than what Milan has. You know, it would just left a sour taste in the mouth. And I think Maldini said, I'm not playing these games. If you want to go, then go. But I, we can't just be held hostage by you. Because then, you know, if we were to wait till the market opened to get Mike Mignon, we probably wouldn't have got him. So M Maldini and Masada struck while the iron was hot. And... We got our iron mic, and oh, I never want to let him go. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's, a, there's always a term. There's always the on the line. No one ain't bigger than a football club. It's exactly. As as yep. That. They will yep. always be in Milan, but they'll not be always done a rumor. It's yep. as simple as that. Do you know yep. what I mean? It's like in Newcastle, everyone thinks they're bigger than the club. They can go. Simple as yeah, that. Yeah, hundred percent. Yep, and it's especially. Simple. Uh, to sound not to sound rude, but especially for a goalkeeper, if you look at you know successful teams over you know the history of football, you don't necessarily need the best goalkeeper in the world in order to be successful. So for a goalkeeper to try and hold a, a club hostage and demand 10 million, 12 million euros a year, sorry, thanks for your time, but you gotta go. <laughs> In other, in other words, ciao, ciao. Yeah. In other words, ciao, ciao. <laughs> and talking a lot, ciao, ciao. Well, that's it then. I mean, I think going to wrap up the show now. I know it's going to be a short one. You've got a baby on the go. And um, again, did you enjoy coming on show again? Absolutely. It was so nice to talk about someone else losing their players rather than my team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. They come to it, man. But, um, you know, like the end of the day, so I have to get it back on the game because you're my Italian football expert. So I love Serie A as well. And um, yeah, what can I say? So um, um, can you tell the viewers where you can find you, please, um, Sabrina? You Just can find me. Yeah, at uh, Sabri B10 on Twitter. And hopefully, if uh, my son behaves a little bit, I'll be able to get back on there. And um, oh, just looking forward to things wrapping up in the transfer market and the season starting again in uh, a month and a bit. Get back to watching yes. football. Absolutely. Football will be back. And it will be back. And we need it back. Yes. There you go. <laughs> Yay. Yay. <laughs> And um, guys, um, if you like the video, like we see, give it a like and subscribe and also become a member for 99p. And all sip chat's still available if you want to do so for the thanks option. And we'll be back again for another scout to report very soon. So give eyes pill for that. And also check out Sabrina's wonderful content as well. And do follow on Twitter as well. And I will do backstage subs. And until then, guys, as always, I'll win a